Hey guys, this is Jesse from FDL1.com. Uh, today we are going to assemble an FDL1 blaster. Uh, we're going to start with a kit like this and build it into a blaster like this. Uh, this assumes that you've either purchased a kit from me or you've gone ahead and you've printed your own printed pieces and then ordered the electronics bundle. Uh, we'll look at some of the tools you need to build the kit and some of the different pieces of hardware as well. So the FDL1 actually doesn't take a huge number of tools to build. Uh, the biggest of which is the number two Phillips head screwdriver. Um, in terms of Allen keys, the smallest you'll need is this. This is a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Uh, the other one is a 3 seconds of an inch Allen head. Um, outside of that, there's one other head that I use. It's this real tiny flat head screwdriver head. Um, it's really just for tightening the knob on the speed controller once we get there. The only other tool we really need is a kind of a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, we'll use those when we tighten up the power switches and whatnot. So along the way you're going to encounter about eight different types of screws and a single washer. Uh, five of these sizes are pan head 632 machine screws. Uh, you can use your Phillips head screwdriver to work with those. Um, this is a 1032 set screw. Uh, I believe it's about a quarter of an inch long. These are M3 by 8 millimeter hex head screws. Um, and then these really tiny ones are M2 uh, flat head screws. Uh, those attach the flywheels onto the motors. Um, and then you have one washer that will fit the 632 machine screws. Okay, so we're going to start assembly from this piece. This piece is your main revolver body. Uh, it houses the IR sensor, the revolver switch. Uh, there's a power distribution uh, piece that goes right here that will power the ESCs and then take the data to and from them. Um, and then the two main plates kind of fit on the other side, either side of here and then the revolver in the middle. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the back plate uh, there's two holes at the very bottom here that are a little inset. Those two holes will take two screws uh, and then connect this back, back plate with the main body. So this is going to take two 3 8 632 um, machine screws. These are the shortest of all of them. Uh, we're just going to connect the two. And you'll know which way these go. Uh, this longer slot here that's going to take the IR sensor is further away from this back plate. Uh, that's how you know the orientation of the two. So next up we're going to actually start filling these slots. Um, first up, we're going to take this piece. This is your IR sensor housing um, and it is going to fit around the revolver and shine IR light in between the slots. Uh, so for that we need this IR center harness. Uh, you'll see this piece has one side that's a little more open on top than the other. And then on your IR, high, IR harness, uh, your actual sensor is bigger than your emitter. Uh, so the sensor goes on the side with a little more space. So we're going to push it in and make sure nothing's sticking out. You don't want to like crease one of these wires in the, in the slot. And then that should slide right in. It may take a little bit of an effort just to make sure that everything is lined up and going. But it should be relatively easily. Do not push on it too hard. All right, once you have that in place, you're going to secure it with another set of the 3 8 632 machine screws. Uh, and so you're aware, as you're screwing, these 3D printed pieces together. Um, 3D printed parts are a little bit delicate. This thing's actually pretty strong once you get it all together. Um, but when you're screwing screws into these threaded holes, you really want to just tighten them enough to get them snug. You don't want to tighten them too hard. You will strip the holes out. Uh, once you get them snug, they'll stay in place. It'll be fine. Uh, you just definitely don't want to over tighten anything on the FTL one. And, uh, next up, we're going to assemble the revolver switch and then uh, install that into the slot for it. Uh, so the revolver switch takes this 
green micro switch and then there are also two little springs that to be honest I am ripping apart ballpoint pens to get and then cutting them in half. Uh, so what happens is this micro switch is going to fit into this switch housing. Uh, you kind of rock it back and forth a little bit in there but then actually the, the striations from the 3D printing will hold it in place pretty well. And then you also need this little retainer piece uh, that will ultimately go over the top of this switch and then hold it into place. Um, so we're going to go ahead and slide the revolver switch into its slot. It's really loose in there, but if you keep it straight and you push it down, it'll stay in place. And then on the switch itself, there's actually these two little conical pieces on either side uh, that the springs for both sides will sit on and hold it in place. So you get the two springs on either side, kind of just let them rest there, and then this retainer piece will slide over the entire green wire and go over the top of the switch. Uh, and then we're going to take two more of these 3 8 machine screws and secure that in place. Once you get that together, uh, this revolver switch should slide in and out fairly easily uh, with not a lot of effort. Uh, next up we want to grab this power distribution piece uh, and we'll secure that in place. Again with two 3 8 machine screws. Okay so at this point we want to start building out the back of the gun just a little bit. Uh, you have this plunger guide piece uh, that attaches to this rear plate in the back like this and actually all the wires will will wrap around the bottom side of this plunger piece uh, so we want to get this in place so that way we can start routing wires so this is actually going to take some of the half inch machine screws uh, these slots are a little deeper So, you want, so you're going to want to take the wires from the revolver switch and from the IR sensor and bend them back towards the back of the gun. The wires from the IR sensor will actually go in this kind of channel on the revolver switch and it will guide them to where they need to go. Okay, so once you get that in place, you're going to want to kind of use your thumb to hold your ESC wires together and give this entire harness a little bit of a twist. You want this to act as an entire unit as you're guiding these. So once you get them all kind of working together, guide them through those channels. Just get them kind of set in place. There's not a lot of room in here, um, so you want to kind of get them set in place and then we'll cap it all off later. Then we're going to want to put the power distribution together. If you look at the power harness, you could really put the red and the black leads either direction there. But what you want to do is set it up so that your red power connection is in the back on the left side and on the right side is up front. And then these kind of friction fit into place on here and will actually hold all the rest of the wiring in place underneath it. So then once you get those in place, push everything down nice and neat, make sure it's fairly secure, uh, then your advanced switch is still moving around and everything is good there. Uh, the power wires will actually separate the two ESC wires and will run down through the middle and then when you plug it in from either side, it kind of has something to push against. Uh, but once you get that all in place, the power, the power wires will run down the opposite side of the plunger guide than their connections actually end up. This will make sense in a couple of minutes. Um, so you want to run those down through the channel the same way that you ran all the other wiring. Put that down in there, push everything down into place, and try to get everything neatly down inside those channels. Once you do, you can take this U-shaped piece um, and this will act as an electrical cap over the top of all of that 
Uh, the guard from the handle will also screw into this as well. So then you can take that cap, put it over the top of the channels, and then as you slide it on, it will end up below this angled portion on the plunger guide here. And you should be able to put that, push that all the way into place without crimping or pinching any of the wires there. Uh, and then once you do, everything will be secure in, securely in place and you can freely let go. Uh, we're going to use two one inch machine screws and two three quarter inch machine screws. The three quarter inch go on the outside. You'll see there's a little bit of a, a re uh, like a, a depression here on this piece. Uh, the shorter ones go in there. So we'll start with the outsides. Now we want to secure our power switch and our power plug in place. Uh, and we're also going to put the advanced paddle in place too. This one is a switch like this with a orange wire on it. Um, so again, the power plug will go in the back and then the switch will go in the front. It's probably a good idea to do both of these kind of simultaneously. So each of these kind of chassis mount switches will have two pieces. Uh, one is a little washer. This one in particular for the power plug is like one of these lock washers. Uh, so put that on there first. There is not a lot of thread that shows on this power terminal. So this is maybe a little tricky. Okay, once you get it started, you're going to screw it down as much as you can. And then use your needle, no needle nose pliers. I tighten it up. You do want all these plugs to be fairly secure, otherwise the vibration of the motors and everything will loosen them up. Um, that's why I'm really suggesting to use these lock washers underneath them. Okay, and then the power switch, there are three terminals on the power switch, but only two of them have these red wires on them. You want the red wires to go towards the inside of the plunger switch. That way when you switch the power switch out, it turns it on. Uh, so same as the power plug, we have this lock washer kind of thing with teeth on there. And then the nut. Get the nut kind of going and then tighten it up with your needle nose pliers. Try to get that switch kind of flush with the front of that. Um, and then the advanced paddle switch, again, so it's the same shape as the power switch uh, with three terminals. Two of them have wires on them. This time you want the wires to go towards the outside of the blaster. So same thing, lock washer. There you go. So then you have an advanced switch on one side and then your power switch on the other side. At this point in time we can start putting in one of our stepper motors. If you look at the two motors, one of them has a longer shaft than the other. I've actually gone ahead and trimmed one of the shafts down a little bit. I tried to avoid this, but I really need those couple of extra millimeters. Um, the one with the shorter shaft is actually for the plunger and the spinner. We'll use that later on. So this time, use the one with the longer shaft. Uh, so what you're going to do is take your power wiring and kind of push it down and then take the stepper motor and orient the wiring out the same side that the power motor, that the power wires go out and put it in place. It looks a little like that. And if you come around from the other side, take four of the M3 hex head bolts here and secure that motor into place. So once you have this motor in place, we can start continuing to build out the back of the blaster. Now grab 
these two kind of triangular shaped back brace pieces. Um, and then these will go on either side like this and start forming this kind of cavity in the back that we can put all the electrical stuff in. So this left side piece that has the, the openings for the user switches and the wiring for the handle, uh, we need to put the wiring for that in first. Um, there is actually a spot for two user switches here. By the time this goes on sale, one of these user switches is going to be gone. It used to control whether the, the Wi-Fi was turned on and off, and I've watched people over and over accidentally flip that while they're playing. And then the Photon goes into this mode where it's trying to find Wi-Fi and it won't shoot or anything. So I'm actually going to take that switch off um, and just provide a jumper for the back that you can either pull in and out if you want this thing on Wi-Fi or not. Um, but at this point in time, I'm going to put in that user switch. Uh, this one has a brown wire on it. So we'll put that in there up front. There's actually two little screws that I forgot to mention earlier. And these are these tiny little 256, I believe, screws. Um, super tiny. And this is actually the other spot that I forgot about that you use the flathead. So this one you feed through from the back and then you pull it through. There's two little slots on either side here that the black plastic part will actually sit in. Once you get it in there correctly, it'll fit exactly like that. So then later on, a part of the handle will slide up and connect to these four wires. Um, there's a little cap here that will go into place, and that's held in place with two of the 3 8 machine screws. One side. Okay, so now we got those in the back. Uh, now we can start working on putting the plunger assembly together. Uh, so we'll kind of set this aside for a minute. Uh, grab this back plate piece. Uh, there's two of these little PCB board mounts. They are almost identical, but they are not. Um, one of them, if you look at the back, it's nice and flush all the way across the back. And then the other one has just a little bit of a bump. Um, I kind of had to adjust the way that the PCB sat in there. Um, so the one that's really flush on the back goes towards the front of the blaster. So if this is the piece that we've put together, and this goes underneath here, that means the front of the blaster is up this way. And then these pieces will install here. And we'll use two of the 3 8 mach machine screws for that. And then we'll do the other one too. Same thing, two 3 8 machine screws. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, you take the other stepper motor, again, this is the one that's trimmed down and is a little shorter than the other one. Uh, orient the wiring this way. And then we will secure that from underneath, again, with four of these M3 by eight hex head screws. Now, now that you have that together, you're going to take this. This is the plunger spinner piece. Uh, the plunger is going to attach to it like this, and then as it spins, it pushes it forward and back. Um, grab one of your 1032 set screws, and this is where you're going to want your longer 330 seconds Allen wrench. 
And there's a hole in the side of the cylinder on here. Just get it started in there. And then on the shaft of the stepper motor, there is a flat spot. So we want the uh, set screw to ride on that, that flat spot. So push the plunger or the, the spinner piece all the way down. Try to keep the uh, set screw lined up with that flat side. And then tighten it up just a little bit. You don't want this over tight. We're actually going to adjust this in a second. So next up, grab, there's a tiny cylindrical kind of bushing piece. Um, that is going to ride in this slot back and forth on your plunger. Um, from there you want to grab a three quarter inch machine screw and the one washer. So the washer is going to go on the machine screw over the top of the bushing and then your plunger is going to ride on top of this spinner piece. And you'll see there's a hole off to one side. So then your bushing is going to go through there and then screw into the spinner underneath. There you go. And then as you spin this, it'll move forward and back. So move it all the way to the back. And take what you've assembled so far. Remember all the black in the motor goes up. And you actually want to install the plunger into the guide at this point in time. We're going to use four half inch 632's. So you want to do the front ones first. And then spin this so it's around to the front and then you can access the back ones. So now at this point, this may or may not spin very freely back here. If it doesn't spin really freely, we need to adjust how high the spinner is. That's why we didn't tighten it all the way down before. So I want to find that set screw in behind there. And loosen it just a little bit. It'll probably wiggle itself into place and you can retighten it. Once you get it to a good spot it will spin freely back and forth. Um, if no matter what you do uh, tightening this and adjusting it it still doesn't spin it's probably the plunger has too tight of a fit inside of the plunger guide. Uh, feel free to sand this down a little bit so that everything rides nice and smooth that needs to have as little friction as possible so that we're not wasting power just pushing the, the plunger back and forth. Okay, one last thing before we start wiring this thing up. There is a micro switch with a blue wire on it uh, and this is the micro switch for the plunger. It's going to go in the back here and then every time the plunger reaches all the way back the FDL1 knows that that plunger is all the way back and the revolver can freely spin. Um, this is the only part of your kit that doesn't come with these connectors on the end. So we're actually embedding this wire kind of inside the printing. So we're going to feed them up through the print like that. And then once you get them through, uh, you can push them into the crimp connector. It doesn't matter which wire goes in which one because we're just connecting, the switch is making a connection between the two wires. Uh, so either one can go on either side. So once you get, get those in, you can give them a little bit of a yank each just to make sure that they're caught inside of there. Uh, and then the bottom, you'll see the shape there, but you can push the switch into place. Uh, and then you have this little cap piece, uh, and you want to match, match the, the shape of this to the mat, the shape on the back of here. Um, and then secure that into place with two of the 3 8 machine screws. Okay, once you get that into place, make one last 
check that this will spin all the way around. And it does. All right, so at this point we can start hooking up our PCBs. Um, we have two. There's one um, that takes the particle photon. Uh, and then there's another one, and on this one you'll see the two capacitors and a resistor on here uh, that accepts the stepper motor drivers. Uh, so we'll take the photon one, and you'll see marked on here it says VN and V3V3. Uh, if you look at the photon, the top pins here are marked VN and 3V3. So just match those up and then push it in there. Um, these drivers, you'll see there's a chip on there. Orient the chip so that it's to the right if this six pin connector is to the bottom. There you go. So now, you want to get your wiring all kind of neatened up. Um, and then the first thing we'll do is take your driver board and connect one side. This connector for the driver board to the, the uh, controller board can go either direction. There's only way one way it can plug in here. Plug that in. So the controller board goes in this side, driver board goes in that side. I want to get that kind of started. Now if you look at the labels on here, um, the one on the left side is the plunger motor. That's this motor. The one on the right side is the rev revolver motor, and that is the one on the front. And then again, your plunger motor goes on the left side. Like that. Your revolver motor goes on the right side. And then one of these battery connections from your power wire below goes in the middle. Once you get that hooked up, <clears throat> you're going to have to bend over these wires a little bit and then you can push the whole thing down. It will ultimately click a little bit into place and then it won't come back out easily. And then your controller board, we're going to start just plugging stuff in. So your controller wire goes in the bottom. And then you can see these are marked on here. This one's marked IR. Um, so the IR is this kind of multicolored one. Gonna plug in there. The next one is labeled PLG, that's the plunger switch, so that's this blue one. Uh, and then we have REV, that's the revolver switch, that was this green one. And then we have ADV advanced switch, which was this orange one that we pulled up. Next one up, we have TRG, that's the trigger wire, so that's the one coming from the side here. Then we have CHM, that's the chamber switch, so that's this brown one that's from the user switch up front. And then the next one is your Wi-Fi switch. Again, like I mentioned before, I'm not going to include the Wi-Fi switch on the side because uh, I think that it causes more problems than uh, benefit. Um, so we're going to leave that one open. I'm going to include a jumper cable that you can plug into that just to turn it on and off. Uh, and then the one on the very end is going to be your ESC wire. Okay, once you get those all into place, Again, you can take this chip, the whole PCB, and slide it in, and it'll click in place like that. So at this point in time, you have pretty much all of your wiring done. You just need to kind of neaten this up. So whatever slack you have, kind of pull it around the edges and just tuck it in on the side of the motors. 
So just get it as neat as you can. Now once all that is in place, we can actually go ahead and cap it up. Uh, so we have the voltmeter. The voltmeter should just friction fit in place. There are screw holes on there. If you want to drill them out and actually put screws in there, you can. Um, but I find that it actually stays in place really well just by friction. And then this one remaining power wire that's hanging out here is what your voltmeter plugs into. And then to cap this off, I'm going to kind of bend this guy in. Keep it out of the way. And then you can cap in all of your electronics. And like I mentioned before, these two strips up front are what's going to hold the front of the case in place. And in the back, we use two 3 8 machine screws. And there's actually holes on the side of this cap that when you screw these screws all the way in, it holds it in place. There you go. Now you got all your electronics kind of wired up and capped in with that thing.